Hello all. Today we will learn about geometric probability through problem solving. The main problem statement is taken from puzzles of mathicon.org. So in this video, we will have a problem statement involving geometric probability and then we will skim through the basics of probability and after that we will be analyzing simplest problems using geometric probability. Finally, solution to the pro original problem statement will be discussed. This video is sponsored by chinta.com. Since 2010 Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics, and they are personalized. with one on one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the problem statement is as follows two squares of side 20 cm each are randomly placed completely inside a larger square of side 100 cm such that the corresponding edges are parallel what is the probability that two smaller squares overlap let's go to the diagram of this question so here you have a larger square whose side length is 100 cm and inside completely inside this is placed the two smaller squares of 20 cm each now they are placed randomly so out of those randomness find the probability for which those two smaller squares overlap for example here the overlap area is shaded with red Now pause the video here if you want to try out the problem on your own. Let us quickly go through the basics of probability. What is a random experiment? It is defined as an experiment whose outcome cannot be predicted with certainty. For example, in a coin toss, you cannot say that the outcome of a coin toss is heads. I cannot say that with certainty. Similarly in a dice roll, you cannot say the number which is going to be our outcome. So in this case we call the experiment to be random experiment because their outcome is random and the set of all possible outcomes is called sample space. For example the sample space of coin toss let us say it as SS1 it is the set consisting of all possible outcomes so heads and tails. Similarly sample space of a dice roll is 1 2 3 4 5 1 6 because no other number can be a outcome of that. let us define probability of an event event is a subset of sample space of a random experiment for example in a dice roll the set 1 2 3 is a subset of sample space and hence it is an event probability of an event is the numerical description of how likely an event is to an event is to occur in a experiment on a scale from 0 to 1 where 0 means that the event is impossible to occur 1 means it must occur For example the probability that tomorrow is a friday given that today is monday is zero because it is impossible now we define probability of an event in an exhaustive set of equally likely outcome as number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes where favorable outcome is the set e or event e and total outcome is the set of sample space but what is an exhaustive set it means that at least one of the outcome from the sample space must occur as an outcome of experiment what is equally likely outcome it means that each outcome of the sample space have equal tendency to occur as outcome of the random experiment for example in a dice roll the numbers each of the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 are equally likely to occur because they have the same tendency to occur and with our knowledge we cannot distinguish which is more likely or less likely to occur so hence this definition is valid for equally likely outcomes alone but if you consider the probability of raining today the number of favorable outcome is 1 because we are the event is it must rain and the total number of outcomes is 2 that is it it rains today or it will not rain today but the probability is not 1 by 2 because those two events are not equally likely because raining in monsoon is more likely and raining in summer is less likely so we cannot use this 
to calculate probability for that experiment okay suppose you roll a fair dice what is the probability of getting an even number let us define the event it is a set of even numbers of that experiment and probability of that event is number of favorable outcomes which is 3 by total number of outcomes which is 6 hence it is 1 by 2 let us now come back to the original question we know that the two smaller squares are placed randomly in the larger square i can consider this as randomly choosing the points a and b inside this larger square and after choosing points a and b i construct these smaller squares on the points a and b and check whether they overlap or not if you try writing the sample space of this random experiment since a and b can be placed anywhere in the square there are infinitely many outcomes of the positions of a and b this set just goes on since if a could be chosen here b could be here 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 there are infinitely many points for b for a particular position of a and there are infinitely many positions of a already so counting the outcomes makes no sense hence the definition of probability here makes no sense so we should define probability in a different way to overcome this we use the notion of geometric probability it is the usual it is almost the usual definition of probability but with varied measure of outcomes we usually measure outcomes by counting them but here it's a different measure and it is measured geometrically suppose consider x is a real number between 0 and 3 what is the probability that x is closer to 0 than it is to 1 let's consider this real line you could observe that numbers from 0 to 0 0.5 are our favorable outcomes because they are closer to 0 than 1 but all the other numbers from here to here are closer to 1 than it is to 0 but if you use the usual definition of probability we will be counting the number of favorable outcomes and we know the number of numbers from 0 to 0 0.5 is not finite hence the usual probability is not making sense so we vary the measure of the outcome we here measure the outcome using lengths the length of my favorable outcome is 0 0.5 and the length of my total outcome is 3 hence I say that the probability is 1 by 6 but here I am not counting the favorable outcomes I am instead using the length geometrically so this is the usual definition of probability but with varied measure of outcomes but i assume only one point that random selection of points imply that selecting equal lengths are equally likely selecting equal length are equally likely previously we had counting equal number of outcomes are equally likely here we are having selecting equal length are equally likely both are the same and we are assuming that but we can also prove that it will not be done here you can uh, use measure theory to prove that actually when we had one random variable we used length as measure of outcome but when we have two random variable we invoke 2d geometry to find the probability and the measure of outcome is area now consider this example of dot board and you are supposed to throw the dot in the target which is the red shaded area we have two random variables here which is one x coordinate of the point and the y coordinate of the point where the dot lands on so hence the probability is the area of favorable region which is pi into 2 square divided by area of the total region which is the area of dot board that is pi times 3 square I am here assuming that the dot cannot go outside the dot board so this would be 4 by 9 and again this is the same as the probability that we were discussing just with the varied measure of outcome and it is and we say that variable select the random selection of point imply equal areas are equally likely to occur let us now come back to the original problem mount the larger square in xy coordinate such that one unit equal one centimeter the two random variables are coordinates of a and coordinates of b because if i choose the coordinates of a and b i can easily construct this square and check whether they overlap or not Suppose say that the coordinates of A is xA, yA 
and coordinates of b is xb comma yb and let us consider only x coordinate for now now let's try to plot xa the value of xa with xb and let's find the favorable area and the total possible area first observe that the value of xa must be less than 80 less than or equal to 80 because this square must be completely contained inside the larger square hence if it goes more than 80 the smaller square is going to be outside the larger larger square so both xa and xb are less than or equal to 80 and they are greater than or equal to 0 because that's where the larger square starts now suppose i choose xa so the coordinate of this point would be xa plus 20 comma ya so what are all the allowed values of xb what are all the favorable values of xb xb should be less than xa plus 20 otherwise the square is going to be not overlapping with the first square the value of xb must be less than xa plus 20 and it should be greater than xa minus 20 it should be greater than xa minus 20 because if it is less than that even then the square is going towards our left so which is like not overlapping hence we apply the constraint that xb must be less than or equal to xa plus 20 and greater than or equal to xa minus 20 so let us now consider first the total possible outcome we know that xa and xb are less than or equal to 80 so this should be the allowed or total area total possible area in which xa and xb can occur and xb must be lesser than or equal to xa plus 20 so the graph of that will be like this and xb so all these points below this line will satisfy now xb should also be greater than xa minus 20 which means it is represented by the area above this line hence the intersection of these two area is our favorable area because these two are simultaneous simultaneous simultaneously true hence the area in the middle is our favorable area so if that is true then the squares are going to overlap we will as well discuss the y coordinate now after calculating this area let us now find the area of region with favorable outcome and total outcome first name the points to be c d e f g and drop a vertical from point d to meet the line oe at h now observe that oc dh is a parallelogram because cd is parallel to o, o, oh since they both have the slope 1 and oc is parallel to dh because they are vertical so let's calculate the height of the parallelogram we know this is 45 degrees and this is 20 so this is 20 sin 45 which is 20 by root 2 and the base oh of the parallelogram is 60 root 2 just because it is the hypotenuse of the right angled triangle whose legs are 60 and 60 so oh will be 60 root 2 so area of parallelogram ocdh will be base into height which will be 20 by root 2 times 60 root 2 that gives you 1200 but we also have this small right angle triangle here whose legs are 20 because 80 minus 60 is 20 and this is 20 and this is 90 degrees so area of deh will be half of 20 times 20 half into base into height which is 200 now let's find the area of oe dc area of oe dc is the sum of parallelogram area and the right angle triangle area which is 1200 plus 200 that will be 1400 but the entire shaded region 
is just a twice of it because what we have found here is the half of that and a similar uh, exactly congruent half is there on the lower side of the line oe hence considering that the area of shaded region or the favorable region will be 2 in 2400 which is 2800 and what is the total area total possible area total possible area we know that the possible outcomes could be from 0 to 80 for both xa and xb for both xa and xb 80 is the maximum value hence the possible area would be 80 times 80 which is 6400 so the probability for x would be 2800 by 6400 giving us 7 by 16 we know the condition on x coordinate for the points a and b so that the two squares overlap along x direction and it is that xb must be lying in between xa minus 20 and xa plus 20 and the probability of that we found out to be 7 by 16 using areas now i can do a separate analysis for the y coordinate of the points a and b because x and y are two independent random variables that is my choice of x will not depend on my choice of y and vice versa so a separate analysis is done for y and it is also same as x and even the constraint is just the same that is ya minus 20 is less than or equal to yb is less than or equal to ya plus 20 and the probability of this will also be 7 by 16 because it is just similar to the analysis that we did for x observe that for the a square and b square to overlap they should overlap both in x direction and y direction because suppose say that they don't overlap in y direction then this should be a, this could be a possible position of b square and as you could see they overlap in x direction but they don't overlap in y direction and hence on the whole they just don't overlap so we say that to overlap we want these two conditions to be satisfied simultaneously and hence the total probability is nothing but the product of these two probabilities because they must be simultaneously true and they are independent as well so i can directly multiply them to get the total probability which is 49 by 256 and that is approximately 0.1914 hence i can say that the probability of two randomly chosen smaller squares to overlap is 49 by 256 the source for the content of the video is here the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tfr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com